Hi, this is Sapil Bharti and we are here in Prague, Czech Republic and today we are talking to John from OwnCloud. So John, first tell us a bit about, you know, for how long have you been involved with OwnCloud? Hey Swapnil, thanks for having me. Yeah, I've been with OwnCloud now for uh, three years. Uh, been super interesting times. Uh, uh, the project is moving forward quickly and we're, um, on my opinion, of course, doing a great job. I mean, I have been covering Own Cloud for day one mm -hmm. when it was announced. But if you look at Own Cloud today, what is your core focus or what is your product? Uh, Own Cloud is a enterprise file sync and share solution uh, that you usually uh, host on premise. Um, uh, we deliver the software for enterprise customers. We have some additional features uh, which are needed in enterprise environments um, regularly. What, what is file sync and share? So mm -hmm. how different is it from Dropbox or Google Drive or what? Uh, in this case, uh, we're quite similar to Dropbox or uh, Google Drive. Um, you, you usually, in, in your company or, or organization, you host uh, own cloud uh, as a server and connect your employees or uh, 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 people with their uh, respective clients, mobile and desktop, uh, to the server and they can um, sync uh, files to the server and also share it with each other. Uh, this makes collaboration very easy. We also offer integrations for um, Collabora Online Office or Only Office uh, uh, where people can simultaneously work on um, uh, Office documents, spreadsheets, uh, uh, Word documents, whatever, um, and uh, do that all in the web browser. Uh, and you have one centralized location. Um, and uh, this is really the great benefit. You don't have to trust your company data uh, with a third party service provider like Microsoft or uh, Amazon. You are actually under control of your data. Um, that's that's a great point I think about on cloud. Yeah. So it's basically uh, you you are running Dropbox on your own server, so you have total control over you know what. That's that's more, that's more or less like right. That's more or less uh, like right. We're better than Dropbox. Yeah, uh, of course. <laughs> yeah, that, that variation. Uh, so so uh, uh, from your perspective, uh, what is the core? I mean, you did touch upon some, but what is the core advantage or benefit of having? own cloud versus using proprietary technologies? Okay, I think the, the biggest thing is security, mm -hmm. um, data security, data mm -hmm. integrity. Uh, uh, if you host the files on, on your premise uh, with an open source software that is reviewed by thousands of people, uh, you know that this um, software can't be flaky, there can't be any leaks, uh, leaking your data to potential um, competitors, uh, to uh, intelligence agencies uh, from foreign, foreign countries. Uh, we have a great customer like um, Air Airbus mm -hmm. uh, and they uh, really rely on open source technology for their um, informational security. Um, I think that's that's the biggest advantage. Um, then another big point is flexibility. Uh, own cloud is open source, so if we and we integrate really well with uh, existing infrastructures. Usually, large organizations gr have grown over a longer period of time. There's a vast amount of infrastructure, and own cloud really connects to Windows Network Drive to. Dropbox, Google Drive, you name it, whatever you would need to uh, your uh, LDAP uh, user provider. Um, you can integrate two-factor authentication. Uh, there's, there's a vast amount of uh, additional features and in, in integrations uh, which uh, the open source te technology of OwnCloud uh, enables you to um, implement and uh, to get running really quick. So How important is privacy? Uh, pr privacy is the biggest thing about own cloud. There's no need for own cloud if you're not concerned about privacy. But uh, uh, for for example, if you have transnational uh, collaboration uh, in between uh, or in one company with uh, several branches across the globe, you want to make sure that the location of the data is in uh, each country uh, where uh, you know the laws and regulations and um, 
for example, a judge in the US can't um, make you give him the data that is located in Europe. Um, this would be not, not allowed from European law. From US law, it might be different. Um, and uh, OwnCloud, with its decentralized um, uh, uh, setup and architecture, allows you really to create an OwnCloud for your uh, European branch, for your US branch. And uh, we have a feature with uh, federated sharing, so you could share files uh, with your colleagues in the US, but uh, the original data remains in its location in Europe. Um, and data pri privacy is uh, the biggest thing. Even if you host data on uh, in the cloud with with uh, third-party service providers, even if it's encrypted, they still can you know get meta metadata uh, um, from your transfers and do whatever they want to. Uh, and when you talk about federating all those features, mm -hmm. uh, let's say if you look at a big organization, you know most of the organizations are not limited to one region. Mm -hmm. you know, they may have offices in the US, maybe in China, maybe in Germany, maybe in France, maybe in UK. Yeah. So after Brexit, you know, so now you are dealing with different regions, they have different, you know, uh, so, so does it also allow an organization to restrict or access to data from different regions also? Uh, yes, there's also a feature that we uh, call Fire Firewall. Mm -hmm. We could uh, access for for instance by IP uh, address um, but you can also of course restrict access by users if you know this user is uh, with organization A in the UK after the Brexit and he's not allowed to have access to, to certain files anymore. Uh, you can just uh, restrict it with group policies. Yeah, because if, mm -hmm. even if you mention, you know, the different countries, you know, but if your organization is based out of one region, then you're stuck, but this allows you to still restrict. Because once the data is in that region, now you're subject to that law, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, so yeah, it yeah. helps. Okay. Now, uh, uh, people sometimes they blend security and privacy together. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion about that? Is it two different things or same thing? I think there's there's uh, two things. There's uh, data privacy, and this is uh, something that really concerns um, myself personally. I don't want to uh, have a large um, company more or less know everything about me, like like Google does, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, and they have awesome services, no 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 matter what. But I I don't think that uh, there's a worldwide le legislation yet that can. Um, uh, regulate such a powerful player um, and data privacy is, is one point of this. Data security uh, is another point and then that, that this is something uh, where I think if you rely on third-party services like um, Google, Dropbox, whatever, nobody can guarantee that my um, data is not altered there. Software security, uh, I think the open source uh, product and the open source development model has shown that uh, open source products are um, the way to go if you want to have um, the right amount of security, the highest amount. There is no right amount, there is only the highest amount of security uh, for, for your software. Um, <clears throat> Basically, 97% of the internet runs on uh, open source web servers. Um, uh, this is the, the development model uh, where thousands of people actually look at the code, review it. Uh, we have a bug bounty program also, so if people find uh, uh, mistakes, <coughs> Um, they get award, awarded by us uh, and uh, we pay them, I think, up to $5,000 uh, for a software and there will always be bugs. vulnerabilities and bugs, uh, no matter what, but I, uh, as soon as they are uh, uh, exposed, exposed uh, people start working on it and they can only wor start working on it because the source code is open. Uh, yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. open source projects are known for fixing them quickly than proprietary company. Okay, mm -hmm. now let's, mm -hmm. you, you, when you were like having conversation before uh, we started recording, you talked about uh, the, uh, uh, the cloud policy or something that is happening between the US and... Uh, mm -hmm. Can you yeah. talk about that? Yeah, the uh, Cloud Act is uh, super interesting. Um, uh, 
uh, it actually says uh, that if you run a business in the US um, and you might even have a separate entity in Europe, uh, um, a US judge can rule any time to uh, get the data from, from the location uh, overseas. I think that's scary enough and uh, uh, being, you know, painting a little bit the devil on the wall, but uh, just uh, last week um, uh, uh, President Trump said, um, okay, let's investigate if we shouldn't um, uh, raise the taxes on cars for, from foreign countries because it's a matter of na national security. And if he can do that for cars, which, you know, has no informational benefit or whatever, he can of course do that for, for data and uh, especially um, uh, um, data for, from, from companies. Uh, and we know that they have been uh, doing this in the, in the past. Uh, and um, protecting your company's data should be the highest um, goal of any CIO. Uh, these days, uh, more and more applications are getting containerized. Yeah. Uh, so what is your strategy towards making own cloud uh, deployment and management more agile and you know, more fitting into the DevOps movement that is going on? Uh, yeah, OwnCloud uh, itself, the OwnCloud developers are uh, big um, fans and, and contributors to the DevOps m uh, movements. Um, uh, we, our, our developers maintain several projects in this area, traffic, um, several others. Uh, there's stuff going on and then uh, from the de development model, uh, we started working now with uh, CERN together uh, on a new front end, um, which will completely be decoupled uh, from the back end. Uh, so you can, um, this makes deployment a lot easier uh, for, for huge instances. Um, <clears throat> so you don't have to have, you can just, it's really easy, it's getting fun. And what we did in the last two years actually was modularizing OwnCloud. We uh, started um, two years ago, the OwnCloud core was a big, huge monolith and uh, uh, we are taking features out, making them smaller uh, um, and making the core smaller. To have really just the core, it's it's a server, and have every single else, else uh, single feature else added to it, and this really makes us more agile. We can uh, release new features, bug fixes, uh, um, um, even security patches. Uh, let's be honest, uh, in a more quickly manner because we don't have to uh, always release than the six seven million co uh, lines of code. Uh, that own cloud consists of. Um, uh, we provide a Docker uh, image uh, ourselves that we also provide to our customers, uh, which really makes deployment so much easier. Um, and uh, for future proofness, uh, modularizing the stuff uh, is also going to be about storage. And I think storage is a topic of the next, it's a big topic right at the moment. I mean, there's Performance, okay, yeah, yada, yada, yada. But uh, storage is that what costs uh, companies really money. And uh, we're working also together with the CERN, uh, who provide the EOS storage uh, at the moment, to have um, a future-proof way of connecting any kind of storage. Um, uh, if it's the EOS storage of CERN or, or S3 or um, any other kinds. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline uh, I've seen, uh, like storage I.O., uh, which is uh, super interesting. And this is, storage is that what costs money companies yes. at the moment. Uh, uh, so you are here at the Open SUSE conference. What are you doing here? Uh, OnCloud sponsors the Open SUSE conference. Uh, we're happy to do that. There's big ties between SUSE and OnCloud since the beginning. Uh, uh, we, you know, hand around developers quite a lot, uh, and um, yeah, we, we have a big tie to the Open SUSE community. I'm proud to sponsor here, and uh, it's uh, for me, it's a good opportunity meeting old friends, uh, talking to people, seeing what's going on. Uh, 
also seeing on what's going on there in the open source world and uh, yeah um, that's about it and also drinking a lot of open source beer of course yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay john thank you so much for talking to me today and hopefully we'll catch up with you again in future with some open source event definitely definitely thank you for having me swap no thank you thanks, thanks.